video presentation was funded by the South Carolina Space Grant via the Palmetto Academy and was created in the summer of 2021. Its purpose is to give a basic understanding of the regolith which covers Earth's moon to interested students at all levels. Thank you for tuning in. What is regolith? The first thing which may pop into your head upon hearing the phrase lunar regolith is, well, what the heck is regolith? According to Britannica, regolith is a region of loose, unconsolidated rock and dust that sits atop a layer of bedrock. The word itself is a Greek term which translates loosely into blanket rock. In other words, regolith is any heterogeneous mixture of rock which covers massive sheets of unbroken stone. On Earth, regolith includes, includes soil and sand, but on other heavenly bodies, it consists of many materials as varied as the bedrock it sits upon, as most all regolith was broken off of its bedrock by some form of weathering. Which brings us to our next point. Where did the lunar regolith come from? Lunar regolith, that is the powdery layer of dust covering our moon, has been steadily deposited on the moon's surface since its formation 4.4 billion years ago, just slightly younger than the Earth itself. In that time, the surface of the moon has been weathered into regolith by three main mechanisms. Firstly, meteorite and micrometeorite impact. From the beginning, our moon has been struck by space debris of various sizes. These meteorites slammed into the moon's surface and broke off sections of the bedrock upon impact. Said sections became part of the regolith. The second weathering mechanism forming regolith is cosmic radiation. Cosmic rays are high-energy electrons, positrons, and other subatomic particles emitted from stars throughout the universe traveling at near light speed, leaving behind tracks and soil grains. Said tracks may be used as a rough estimate of a regolith particle's age. The final primary weathering mechanism is solar wind. The plasma of charged particles flowing from the sun can irradiate the outer 50 to 100 nanometers of a grain, causing the mineral to break down to an amorphous state. Solar wind particles, largely composed of hydrogen and helium, but also heavier elements, can become embedded in the soil particles. Solar wind ions can also knock individual atoms out of place in a process called sputtering. These atoms will either be lost to space or redeposited on nearby grains. What comprises the lunar regolith? The lunar regolith itself is comprised of rock chips, mineral fragments, impact in volcanic glasses, and a peculiar component only found on the moon called agglutinates. The ratio of component parts can vary greatly depending on the moon location. Agglutinates are aggregates of mineral fragments bound together by glass. They are formed during meteorite impacts. The mean grain sizes of lunar soil ranges from 40 to 800 micrometers, with most falling between 45 and 100 micrometers. The age of a particular grain, how long it has been exposed to the surface, surface, is most reliably determined by its iron content, with grains higher in iron being considered more mature as it is a product of weathering. How is lunar regolith relevant to humanity? During this presentation, we will be focusing on how lunar regolith is relevant to mankind in the short term. That is, how regolith has affected Apollo astronauts and equipment, and likely will affect Artemis astronauts and equipment, as well as the Chinese Chang'e program. Apollo astronauts described the lunar dust as one of the primary inhibitors to nominal operation. It would adhere to their suits and get tracked into their modules. Its smell was likened to burnt charcoal or spent gunpowder and caused nasal congestion when inhaled. The dust on the moon is negatively charged due to constant solar radiation, which is why it is so naturally adhesive. In addition to astronauts themselves, the regolith adheres to equipment, gumming up motors, and drills. The longer equipment is on the moon, the more dust adheres to it. Astronauts will be in a constant battle against the regolith, armed with weapon, weapons ranging from wet wipes to electron beams designed to alter equipment's charge. What's more, the regolith can be toxic to humans suggested to prolonged exposure, containing reactive dusts such as silicon dioxide, which can cause silicosis, a life-threatening lung disease. When planning extraterrestrial travel, all variables must be carefully considered, and there are few as important to upcoming missions as lunar regolith. We hoped you enjoyed hearing this little presentation on lunar regolith as much as we enjoyed putting it together. We would like to give special thanks to Dr. Kishi Chin of Clemson University and Ms. Tara Scazzaro of the College of Charleston, as well as the sources on this page from which this presentation was crafted. Thank you and have a nice day.